All right, chickies, let's do it. All right, guys, <laughs> scared the chicks. Uh, the th third batch of chicks has arrived, as you can see. This is uh, this is the fall batch, I call it, because they're gonna be running through October, I think October 13th is their processing date. And it's August 17th right now. So, all females, these are from uh, Hoover Hatchery in Rudd, Iowa. I've used them for the last couple batches. I decided to do all females just because uh, I wanted to see I wanted to see if I could get a little bit more consistent size uh, in bird, you know, after eight weeks. So I'm hoping I can keep them in that five pound range, four or five pound range. I used a different hatchery for the first batch of the year and it was a straight run, so males and females. There were sizes all over the place, anywhere from four pounds to over seven pounds, and so it made it kind of tough to market them and sell them. You realize a lot of people have trouble knowing how to cook a whole chicken, but knowing how to cook like a seven plus pound chicken, so, um, which I don't blame them. My crock pot is you, crock pot's usually how I cook them, and I, I couldn't get a seven pound chicken in my crock pot, so. I wanted to keep them. I wanted to keep them a little bit more consistent this time around. So, the current batch that's out on pasture right now, summer batch number two, they will go in in about two weeks. So they have about two weeks left. One thing I really have noticed though, with uh, you know, it could be the hatchery, it could be the time of year, or it just could be the fact that they're they're all females. They are so much more active. This second batch that I have out on pasture right now is extremely active. Um, you know, for being Cornish cross, they actually are, they're foraging and free ranging uh, a lot more than the first batch I had this year or uh, the batches I had last year. Again, could be a multitude of things. This is the latest that I've run them. Last year I, I started in really early spring and then into like middle summer, they were they were already out on pasture. So this is the first time that I, I started a batch in the middle of summer and we'll carry them into fall and then you know this is like i said this is my third batch i'm starting them here at the end of summer and they're really going to go into fall so it could be a handful of things like i said could be the time of year um there's obviously a lot more uh insect life out on the pastures this time of year so that could obviously lead to them um foraging a lot more just because there's so much more good stuff to eat out there could be the weather, they could be doing a lot better because obviously in the spring, uh, you have those cold snaps, especially overnight, you have those rainy days out on pasture. So um, having hot, dry weather, you know, this last batch, that could absolutely be, be why they're doing a lot better. Could also be the hatchery. And then, like I said, it could absolutely be that they're all females. You know, I, I noticed they're, they're not as lazy. Maybe the males are the ones that I was looking at during all my straight runs that just didn't seem to be foraging very well. All they wanted to do was lay in front of the feed troughs and eat. You know, maybe they were maybe they were all males. And so I've been super happy. I've been super happy with it. One thing I did do different this time around, I just finished reading Pastured Poultry Profits, which I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you know, Joel Salatin needs no introduction to you. 
um, and a lot of you have probably watched or read that book. Um, but one thing he said in there is that they don't clean out the brooder in between batches, and that has helped with the health of each batch of chicks. And batches last year, I lost a few chicks. My first batch this year, I lost a few chicks. The second batch, unfortunately, I lost a few chicks. So I'm curious to know if I didn't clean out the brooder. I fluffed it up, stirred it up. So I'm curious if 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 by not cleaning out the brooder, I'm gonna I'm gonna see a difference and hopefully not lose any chicks. The other thing that I figured out is is you really do have to follow the instructions of each individual hatchery. Obviously, there's information out there on the internet, all sorts of books you read, whatever, um, on the best way to raise chicks in the brooder. But when it comes down to it, I think each individual hatchery just knows what's gonna work best for their chicks. And I was just using generic information last year in the first batch this year, and that led to some leg problems and some growth problems and then could have ultimately been too why I lost a handful of chicks in those first two batches. So um, the batch that's out on pasture right now, I really followed the hatchery's recommendations on feeding, watering, uh, temperature, stuff like that. And although I still lost two chicks, I didn't have any leg problems. I didn't have any abnormal growth problems, anything like that. So all the birds are super healthy. Um, so I'm obviously going to do the same thing with this batch because it's from the same hatchery. I'm going to follow those those instructions as well to a T. Um, so I think I think it'll help determine too if by maybe keeping by maybe not cleaning out the brooder um, that you know maybe that will help keep them healthier and I won't lose any chicks this time around. But we'll see. It's amazing to see. It's it's very easy to forget how tiny these things are and can be. They grow so fast that you get used to seeing them in that, that teenager stage or full grown, which is what we're starting to get to now. You know, that last week, week and a half, it just seems like the birds explode and you get you get used to seeing them the way they look and, and how they look and how big they are and how many feathers they have and all that. It's every time I open a box, when I get a new box of chicks in, it's just like, holy cow, these things are tiny. It's really easy to forget how tiny and fragile they start out. So this is the new brooder this year too. Uh, obviously an old horse stall. We have a row of stalls in our barn that used to be used to be three different horse stalls. Uh, in the, the years past and then the first batch this year, I just used one of the chicken tractors. I'd bring it up from the pasture, put it in, actually put it in the barn and use that as a brooder but obviously you're limited on space um, as the chickens grow and it just they weren't convenient but I, then obviously when the chickens went out to pasture I would have to um, you know I'd have to put them in the shipping crates the, the chickens in the shipping crates and then drag that chicken tractor out of the barn drag it into the pasture wherever I was going to start them for their pasture rotation and it just it was always a I was always rushing and it was kind of just kind of a stressful time. And then, then I had to clean up because I wouldn't put anything down. So all the bed shavings and everything would then be on, on this concrete floor. So then after the chicken tractor left, I'd have to clean up. And there was usually like mold and crap stuck to the concrete underneath from, you know, being wet and all that. And it just, it wasn't working. So plus, I guess the biggest reason was now that I'm doing multiple batches a year, I've overlapped the time that I now have chicks at the same time that I have chicks in the brooder at the same time that I have chicks out to chickens out to pasture. So I needed to be able to have both of those chicken tractors available for the, for the chickens out to pasture. So I use this and it's actually working really well. Um, I just kind of, it's, it's about 11 feet long and five feet wide rigged up that, that board and then hang my lamps. I originally built this little divider wall here with movable feet. The thought being that as the chicks got older and bigger, I could slide this divider wall out and give them more room. But this this 11 by 5 is actually is actually working pretty well for the chicks all the way up to, like I said, three weeks old. Um, we'll see if I do 
if I do a batch in early spring next year just to get a jump on it and get, get more than three batches done a year, then they're probably going to at least be in the brooder for a month because it'll still be too cold to move them out to pasture or it'll take them longer to fully feather out. So we'll see if this works size-wise for, for four-week-old chickens, but you know, up to three weeks old, they still have plenty of room to run around in here. I obviously did have to use some cardboard to kind of shore up the sides here because they would pile in the corner. It's simple. Obviously just use scrap wood to make this divider wall. Just a scrap piece of fence board. Hang over the brooder and then just some, some store-bought eye bolts and hangers for the lamps with varying adjustability. Obviously, I'm sure I'm going to get comments on the unsecure nature of this because it is open up top and you know these giant holes <laughs> believe me I've thought about it and the first couple weeks in here that I used it with the chicks in here it definitely stressed me out <sighs> I'm working on it I'm thinking this winter I'm gonna spend some time in the barn and try and try and make a fully enclosed try and make this fully enclosed somehow obviously all it'll take is some feral cat or a raccoon or something to get in here and just totally decimate an entire chicken batch before I before I decide to do something but and we keep the barn doors closed you know especially when we're not here so I'll um, keep you guys updated on you know anything that comes up in the brooder but there's a lot of information out there on on raising chicks in a brooder um, people that are a lot more experienced than me and probably have some some different ways and better ways of doing it but I want to try and get some footage going to the butcher, uh, loading up, taking the road trip, uh, getting them processed, and then bringing them home. And then I also want to do a video on the two chicken tractors. I've in my my cattle videos, I've had a few comments afterwards when I show when I show the chickens, um, people commenting on the two different types of chicken tractors that I have, and and there's definitely pros and cons to each. And so I know there's some people out there that are that are thinking about doing this or they're already doing it, but they're thinking maybe they'll change their chicken tractor style. So I'll, I want to put together a video on, like I said, the pros and cons of each of those kind of the last couple years, what I figured out works and what doesn't work. So stand by for that one. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Give a, give a like or a thumbs up if you like this one. And if, if you want to see more chicken videos, I obviously my channel is kind of more revolved around uh, the cattle side of things. But if you want to see more videos on, pastured poultry uh it's something that just like cattle i'm getting into i'm learning more every year i'm trying to do as much research and, and learn as much as i can um so it could be a journey we could all take together trying to figure out how to do this on a on a micro scale but you know make a little bit extra cash every year so if you want to see more of that stuff comment let me know and and i'll try and put together more videos of the chicks all right thanks for watching guys